his face and body are everywhere. He works the runway just as well as those rugged, lucky jeans. And he's eye-catching in those Dolce & Gabbana campaigns. You may not know his name, but you can't miss that face and, well, everything else. David Gandy is arguably the most successful male supermodel ever. You now have the title richest male model in the world? Something like that. I mean, it's, it's just, I mean, <laughs> where, where, where these accolades of the highest paid? I mean, no, no one ever tells each other. It's what, a nice superlative to have. It's a nice, yeah, I, I would sort of just rather be called sort of at the top of the game. At 32, with his athletic build and smoldering glances, Gandhi is indeed at the top of the game in an industry where female fashion models lead the way. How does that compare in terms of what the women at your level are paid? What's the disparity? It's, 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 you, you can't even compare it. It's a very small percentage of that. For male models, attaining supermodel status has been challenging. It's an accolade to be a female supermodel or to be a female model. They get paid an incredible amount of money, they got a lot of coverage, and people know their names. And guys did well, but they never said they were models. They Why? I don't know. It's probably think it's down to Zoolander. <laughs> <laughs> the famous Zoolander. Zoolander. Ah, yes, that Zoolander. Well, I guess the look I'm best known for is Blue Steel. Starring Ben Stiller as a dim, vain, self-centered male model. Ben Stiller killed us, I think, in that. <laughs> but at the same time, I can't help but love that movie. But it's no joke that the men's fashion industry rakes in more than $400 billion worldwide and is growing. And Gandhi has changed the perception of male models, breaking those cliches and pushing through stereotypes ever since a friend entered him in a modeling competition he later won. What were your expectations when you went into that show? I don't think I really had any. I came into the industry from university and just thought, you know, I won the competition, never thought of being in the fashion industry, so it could be fun. It was an adventure. With his masculine physique, it was difficult for Gandhi at first. He started off doing catalog shoots at a time when even male models were expected to be ultra thin, almost feminine. Yeah, I didn't follow the trend, I bucked the trends. Um, so when everyone was saying, you need to be skinny, you need to be skinny, your legs need to be thin, I was like, well, I'm not a skinny guy. But that manly physique is what set him apart. And in 2006, Dolce & Gabbana took a chance. They featured Gandhi wearing the barest of bathing suits for their light blue men's fragrance. Millions of people saw David Gandhi in those tiny white trunks. The ad brought him icon status in the modeling world. I have a personal love of that picture. It changed my life, but as people said, it changed the industry. Um, and that's not an easy thing to do. Today, Gandhi can pick and choose his assignments. He's dabbled in film. Are you listening to me? I told you to stop it. Seen here in the short film, like Away We Stay. It will also include an exclusive interview. And created style and fitness apps, carefully managing his image, his brand, as he calls it. I want to have like power and sort of a, like a brand though, kind of. That's no pressure, just brand. Just brand. We caught up with Gandhi at a cover shoot in New York City for Vogue Ombre's latest issue. Does it look too done, do you think? You're talking about the hair? You think it should look slicker? Is that what you said? Let me say. So you think it looks too puffy? Yeah, it looks quite round. At this stage of his career, he knows what works and what doesn't, and has the power and clout to call the shots. He disappears to get his hair redone. I see we had a, a hair issue. Um, not an issue, just. I know how I like my hair and But it speaks to what we were talking about, that you have a brand and that you are in control of it. And that's yes. a big part of making sure that your career goes in the direction you want to. That's exactly it. His success keeps him on the road constantly. Since the beginning of January, I've been to LA, I think three times, into New York, probably like four times, Barcelona in between, and Milan and, and London. Hard to have a personal life, it sounds like. A little bit, yeah, absolutely. Yes, that's right. The world's most successful male model is single. What is it like in terms of relationships within the fashion world? Do you make a point to not date other models? How do you balance that? There's two ways of thought. You're on a beautiful boat in Capri and you're half naked and you're like, no, believe me, there's a big tugboat and there's 20 Italian sort of fishermen behind you, but it's not romantic. A model will understand that. So I don't know. I, I, I don't <laughs> you haven't know. figured it out I, yet. I don't, I don't have the answers. Don't, don't ask me. I'm probably the worst person to ask. If anyone's got the answers, then please send them to me. That'd be great. At an age when most models have retired, Gandhi is hitting his stride and looking for the next opportunity.
I, I think you always want to be doing this. They get bored very easily, so there'll always be an element of pushing where we can go, and that's that's where we're. We've we've always pushed it. For Nightline, I'm Amy Robach in New York.